The only thing uh, you can manipulate the watch with is the crown. Here the winding stem and the crown. And there's two things you can do with the crown. That is to wind the movement. And if you pull it out, then you see those wheels are not moving. So that's the hand setting, the winding. You can see if I go that way, I'm winding. And if I go the other way, nothing is happening. There's a, a slip. I will show you a bit more about that. And then if I pull, you see the sliding pinion went from that position to that position. Now the winding pinion is stationary and I'm setting the hands with via this way. To release the winding stem, there's always a small screw or especially with quartz movements, an arrow pointing or a, a small lever with an indentation, a small dip. Crucial thing to understand is that this winding pinion is on just a round bit of the winding stem. So if you apply pressure and you're winding, this winding pinion won't do anything. But because of this square bit means that the force from winding first goes to the sliding pinion because on the inside, I'm not sure if you can see, it's square. There you go. So if you're winding, the sliding pinion is transmitting all the force and it's engaging to the winding pinion to wind and to the other side to set the hands. That's crucial. So the sliding pinion engages on one side or the other and is transforming the power. You see, I'm having a bit of friction to both pinions, but the sliding pinion is always moving because it's square and the winding pinion doesn't move because it's round. A crown, that is the crown, that's the crown and that's a stem. A crown is secured with a bonding agent. It's not glue and I'm going to show you in a moment, but it's a bonding agent. So you have to warm the crown just a bit. The bonding agent will uh, dissolve a bit and then uh, you can work on the crown. Important. So, not too much, just a bit. Doesn't need too much. And that one is new. Well, first thing first, the diameter of the thread must be the same. It's not always the same. So be, care, uh, be careful with that. With this winding stem, it wasn't broken. Uh, now we know the correct length, but it's usually, maybe the crown is gone. It doesn't look too right. The thing is, you don't have to measure the length of the winding stem. It's way easier than that. And not many watchmakers show this trick. And once you've seen it, it's that simple. But maybe uh, you haven't seen it before and you're measuring and stuff. It's so easy once you've seen it. Trust me. Well, make sure it's in the 
inside position, just pushed inwards. Now the only thing we know, we have to know, is the space between the crown and the case. Now we know the winding stem is this amount too long. So if you grip it there with your finger, you snap it off there, you've got the perfect length for your winding stem. I use this, but there are other uh, tools you can use, but this is the one I like. Again, be careful with your eyes. Always squint your eyes and look away, because you don't know what's going to happen. Now, you just snapped off this bit of the winding stem. Go, you just twist it like this, so you make it nice and round. Do you see the double action? You are rolling and you are filing. There we go. And now if I put them in, there we go, look at that. There's a crown and no air gap between the crown and the case. Simple as that. If it's too short, then ah. Um, there's a simple trick, and watchmakers use that for centuries. This is the best tip there is. If it's too short, well, I always use a scalpel. And this is soldering uh, tin. And if you make tiny bits of soldering tin and put that into the crown, then turn it. And if there's a bit of bandwidth you can work, you can work on, um, you can uh, make it a tiny bit longer. Um, watchmakers has been using this for centuries. Uh, well, at least one and a half century. <laughs> but the, sol the soldering tin uh, really does work. But now we are not finished. Because it's very easy to lose the crown like this. Um, now to finish it off. Uh, the stem is the correct length. Crown is still there, but we are not finished. And this is crucial um, if you don't want the clients to come back and you have to start over again. You have to take off the crown again. Take off the crown. There we go. And then lock tight. It's not glue. I repeat, it's not glue. If you glue the crown to the stem, it just will break. It's a bonding agent. Um, it will keep the crown in place. And if you warm it, it will come loose. It's not glue, but it does make sure that the crown is stays uh, in place. I use 638, but there are several uh, you can use. But Loctite is got a huge array, but there are other bonding agents uh, you can use. It doesn't have to be Loctite as long as you use a bonding agent. You don't have to use too much. Just a bit. And then I'm going to screw on the crown, screw it back and screw it on again. So the bonding agent will go through the thread and make sure it's intact. So on, off, on, 
of all. So wipe off the excess. Again, I do it again with my nails. Now the stem is the correct length. Now we make sure the crown won't come off. But if we want it to come off, it can just to warm it just a bit. Never use glue. Here I use just a bit of uh, Molycoat DX. It's a grease, a heavy grease. Uh, but for the sliding motion of the sliding pinion, um, for me, it works perfectly. If you use an un another uh, grease, no problem. But I would advise grease over a heavy oil like uh, HP 1300. Um, I think grease will work better. You can see there's a still a bit of winding stem sticking out of the crown. Easy peasy. Just a pin vise. And now you see I'm holding the stem. I just gently warm the crown. Not too much, not too heat, not too hot, just a tiny bit. It's not even too hot. Just warm it up so the bonding agent will loosen up. And then so if it sticks out, easy. Just a pin vise. Warm it just a bit and take it out. That's the easy bit. And then you have your crown. And your piece of stem. Now I'm going to snap it off so short that I cannot use the pin vise to twist it out. I just snapped this off and you can see, you can see it's not big enough to grip with the pin vise. That just doesn't work. You see? Nothing to grip. What I did is it's a bit more flat now and now no hope that we can grip it with uh, the pin vise. What we have is a very thin file. It's a a screw slot file to make a, the, the screw uh, indentation. And what you can try is to make you know, with the screw head file simply make a slot. Yeah, clearly, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and if you go just a tiny bit into here, it doesn't matter too much. The bonding agent. Look at that. And now it's, you can even uh, use your pin vise. And in a an, uh, lathe. And if you remove material there then it will stick out and then with the pin vise you've got a fighting chance just to pick it up uh, again it doesn't work uh, every single time but I've saved many 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 crowns like this put the crown in a lathe, remove this material, don't touch the, the winding stem, and then uh, you can grip usually this bit of the winding stem. Again, I really do hope this was helpful. Uh, what is a winding stem? What is a hand setting stem? Difference.
Why not use glue, but use a bonding agent? Uh, how to make a stem the right size without measuring? Just see the width uh, and the amount you have to take off. Uh, make sure there's no air gap between the, the, the crown and the case. Uh, it just, just doesn't look professional. If it's too small, just a tiny bit, just use soldering tin, just a bit, and that might help you out. Um, just simple tips and tricks uh, we use as professional watchmakers, but it's very easy to do at home.